All right, this video is on rational exponents. We all know that, say, 3 to the 1 half power, if we square that, you know, you got powers raised to powers there. So everybody remember what to do with the exponents? Well, that's right, you multiply them. So 1 half times 2 would give you 3 to the first power, which is just 3, right? And we also know that, say we're taking the square root of a number. It doesn't really matter what that number is, but remember we take the square root of a number, we're looking for some number that when we square it, we get 3, right? So if we square this whole thing here, the square root of 3 takes us back to some number that when we square it, we get 3, so the square and the square root undo each other, so to speak, and you're just left with 3. So since both of these equal 3, uh, we're going to define 3 to the 1 half power to be the same thing as the square root of 3. And that leads us to rational exponents, where we have exponents is, er, do not really just mean um, the number of times you multiply the base together. All right, we've got fractional exponents now. And fractional exponents equate to roots, to radicals. The notation for this um, is the following. All right, so if we have, say, x to the 1 over n power, that means the nth root of x. That's where we'd have something, say, like 9 to the 1 half power. When we see the 1 half up there for the exponent, that really means, all right, the square root of 9, which just goes to 3. Already see that? So 9 to the 1 half power um, is really just a fancy way to write the number 3. Okay, so 1 half power means the square root. Doesn't really matter what you have. Say you've got, say, like 8 to the 1 third, all right? The, the 3 down there in the exponent is what becomes the index in your radical. So yeah, there's 3, you read, read that as a cube root of 8, which we all know is just to be 2. Right? So the denominator of your rational exponent there becomes the index in your radical. Now a more general form would be, say, the following. x to the m over n. This, true or false? we could rewrite as 1 over n to the m. Give you a second to make sure that's true. Everybody agree that's true? Because if you multiply the exponents together, you get back where you started. I'm doing it this way because now we can use the above definition and say x to the 1 over n is the same thing as the nth root of x, and all of that is to the m power. So x to the m over n is the same thing as the nth root of x, all of that raised to the m power. Notice that the denominator, n, becomes the index for your radical, and your numerator becomes the power to the whole thing, raises the whole thing to the power. But there's more. Or x to the m over n. <coughs> Think of it this way. True or false? x to the m all raised to the 1 over n. Again, everybody agree that's true, we just wrote it a different way. But if you multiply this together, you get back where you started here. So this time we'd say, all right, we want 1 over n is the exponent for this x to the mth base. So that's the nth root of x to the m. So notice the difference, right? x to the m over n can be written in two different ways. So you got something like, oh, 25 to the 3 halves, right? Well, to rewrite this in radical notation, this is called exponential notation, and over here is called the radical notation, uh, that would be the square root of 25, and you could go all of this raised to the third, using this little first idea, right? And by the order of operations, we get the square root of 25, which is 5, so 5 cubed, which is 125. So 25 to the 3 halves is the same thing as 125. Everybody see that? That's the way I typically like to use it. I keep the, the m, the numerator of the exponent there, on the outside. Um, but we do need to know that it can be inside here. It can be. It can come in quite handy, um, and will come in handy later when we start um, simplifying up um, radicals with, with variables. All right, so let's do another example. All right, so 8 to the 2 thirds. All right, so we could rewrite that as... Well, the denominator is 3, so that becomes the index of 8 squared. 
right? And the cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So 8 to the 2 thirds is just a fancy way of writing 4. Now I'm going to use this one real quick just to show you that the other way works as well. All right? So you could have 8 to the 2 thirds. You could write that as the cube root of 8 squared. Right? That was the other way we could, re we could rewrite it. And then following the order of operations, we'd have the cube root of 64, because 8 squared is 64. And the cube root of 64 is 4. So see, it doesn't really matter which way you go. I typically like to go this way because it keeps the number smaller. You know, cube root of 64, we might not know all of those off the top of our head if they get to be too big. So whenever I'm raising an, a, just a number to a rational exponent, I typically um, do it this first way. All right, so here we'd have square root of 9 cubed. And the square root of 9, of course, is 3. And 3 cubed is 27. So 9 to the 3 as is just a fancy way of writing 27. All right, so this last one down here, you have 8 to the negative 1 third. Well, before you do anything, you should always make your exponents that are positive before you start doing the radical stuff. So the first thing we want to do is write this as 1 over 8 to the 1 third. Right, remember that from um, a previous class where you want to rewrite negative exponents so that they're positive? Right? And then we'd say, all right, that's the same thing as 1 over the cube root of 8, which is 1 half. Right? So 8 to the negative 1 third is just a fancy way to write the number 1 half. Are we getting the idea of how to rewrite it from exponential notation into radical notation? And whenever you have numbers raised to a rational exponent, this is um, probably the easiest way to do it. Now, all those properties of exponents that you had before, they still apply. Nothing, nothing's going to be changed just because we've got rational exponents. So here we have two things that we're multiplying together. They have the same base, so you keep the base, and you do what with the exponents? Well, you add them. Two-fifths plus three-fifths, and that's two to the five-fifths, which is just two to the first, which we would just write as two, right? So multiplying at the same base, keep the base, add the exponents. Doesn't matter if those exponents are integers or if they're fractions. All right, so here's another one. We got all of this raised to the one-third power. Well, we know that means the cube root of negative 27 x cubed. We'd say, all right, well, the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3, and the cube root of x cubed would be x. So this goes to negative 3x. All right, and this last example down here, you're using the distributive property. Everybody remember the distributive property? So you have x to the two-fifths times x to the negative two-fifths, and then x to the two-fifths times x to the three-fifths. All right, well, let's do it. So x to the two-fifths times x to the negative two-fifths gives you x to the what? Well, you're multiplying two things that have the same base, so you keep the base and add the exponents. Two-fifths plus a negative two-fifths would give you a zero. And then we'd have x to the two-fifths times x to the three-fifths, same base, keep the base, and two-fifths plus three-fifths gives you five-fifths, which is one. So x to the zero is one plus x is what this simplifies down to. Right, so all those rules of exponents are not going to change. The only thing we're doing differently now is bringing in rational exponents. This is the general form, x to the m over n. Just make note of where the um, denominator goes. It becomes the index, and where the numerator goes, and you have a couple of options for that. All right, that's it. Study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.